Welcome back to Texas Hillbilly. This is going to be episode 8, I believe, on the Gladiator. What we're going to do is I have a minor rock ship here, and we're going to try to fix this. I got me a windshield. I don't know. If, did they have that fade up top? I don't think they did. I think they ordered it for like an 80s Wagoneer. Because this truck obviously didn't show anything for 68 uh, Gladiators. They didn't even show a windshield available. And it's the same windshield from like 1963 to 91 or something like that. So these are very available. Huh? And it's probably easier when the windshield is not broken, but we just had to have a little fun. You know, how many times is a kid going to get the opportunity to, to smash a windshield in with a baseball bat? You know, you want them to do this stuff at home under your supervision, not as delinquent teenagers, you know, going out vandalizing other people's property. out of this thing because um, it's kind of pointless I guess to clean up the glass if this thing's still hanging here like a you know just constantly dripping stuff and dropping and as I pull it down it's gonna shoot glass out I need safety glasses that's crazy it cuts so hot it's like I'm cutting a inner tube or something so I don't know if you noticed, I glued or I taped a bunch of plastic inside a gigantic, um, thick trash bag. I cut it open and I taped it. So I don't have to clean up as much inside the interior. I've got a lot of glass coming down. I'm going to have to vacuum the dirt again. trash can <laughs> well fellas here's a look at our windshield frame that's my dash right there I'll take this opportunity to clean it up look how clean this is that's barely rusty just surface rust this is where I'm gonna stop for the night it's getting dark earlier now so I'm running out of daylight but um got it all cleaned up Got the interior cleaned up. I think what I'm going to do tomorrow is get some quad out steel wool, steel wool and uh, see if I can clean this up. In okay, we're at the point where we're going to go ahead and clean the dashboard up. All right, Sherman thinks he's going to help. So here's your steel wool, and uh, your butt's going to get wet. You could stand on the ground. And I don't want to get this completely soaking like that. <laughs> Jeez, that's too much water. <laughs> Let's just start scrubbing clean, and this towel we're gonna have to keep here Jesus, a lot of water. yeah don't try not to let it do too much water should i clean this too i'm gonna remove that probably making a difference i couldn't find quad out so all i did was get some sos I mean, even if it doesn't make a difference, this is a good time to clean a dashboard when you can clean from the top, right? Okay. Looks, looks a lot better right there, right? Yeah. Like right here? Yeah, right here looks really good. It's actually some color. Sherman, I'm just going to take a nap, huh? 
Good and cool. Oh, it's barely sticking anyways. Daddy. It's okay, baby. Mm -hmm. Not too worried about that. <laughs> There's like nothing in there anyways. I get these ashtrays open. Sherman, you're a sunbather, aren't you? Those ashtrays need to be cleaned too, so it's okay. That's so dirty water. Don't get near me. <laughs> Told you, you just stand on the floor. You're going to get your butt very dirty. You already got stuff right there. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Ew! So dirty right there. <laughs> it's not really dirt, it's rust. I think that's what we're seeing as rust. No, not rust. That dirty water. That's rusty water. How can you do that? Do it? Oh, look. What? I'm doing it. Yeah, you're doing great, baby. Okay, that made quite the difference. What about this really, really nasty knob here? This? Okay, buddy. Yeah. It's a noggin. A noggin. <laughs> Pretty cool, huh? It's not perfect, but it's better. No. All right, so we're gonna do a little bit of a problem. This is the windshield channel I ordered. You. Uh, Stick this on the windshield, you put glue down, and usually the windshield, you glue the windshield to the frame right here. That is not the way that this is designed. I have a groove all the way around, but the windshield does not sit on this face. It floats inside of it using the rubber gasket. That means I've got to reuse the old gasket. Thankfully, I didn't cut it up. It's in bad shape. Now, somebody put a bunch of goop on here thinking that it was leaking right here, but I don't think it can. So I gotta clean this up, I've already started. It's not very pliable, but maybe it'll work. She blew me a kiss while she counted in the cars. And she pulled away, there remained an empty place. So much for cleaning up. I just made the biggest mess with all this stuff. I gotta clean again. So that was a disaster. I've got a lot of caulk to clean up. Um, if you notice, I just used some liquid nails. I have some really good high quality windshield adhesive, but I'm not going to waste on this because this is just rubber going to metal, not glass going to metal. So let's see how this works up. Works out. It says easy cleanup. So once this dries, you know, tomorrow I'll try to clean all the caulk off. I hope it actually stays. It says construction adhesive. And then, um, I might use something else inside the channel. So the rubber is supposed to do the ceiling. We'll see. Anyways, um, I'm going to clean up and we'll get back on this tomorrow. Good morning. This is how the Jeep slept last night. Bungee cords. Because we were supposed to get a cold front with rain. And I didn't see any of that. So let's look together and see how this um, liquid nails held up. Now, I know what you're thinking. This looks like crap. Yeah, I don't like it. It's not even really dry. 
this. It moves, man. It's not that great. When the windshield's in, it's not going to allow it to move. That's a good thing. And all this white, they say you can clean up with mineral spirits. Hmm. So here's the thing. I've got cold fronts coming in in two hours with rain and thunderstorms. Probably less than two hours. So honestly, I need to get this windshield in as quickly as I can. What I'm thinking about doing is just razor blading so that the tape still kind of holds and trying to work it in, you know? So let's get to that. Okay, we got the policy on yeah. Hands completely covered in this stuff. Lovely. Here's our new windshield. Oh god, I hope I can do this by myself. My little suction cups that I got from Harbor Freight. Used them a couple times. They're no good now. They don't have any suction. They're messed up. Set it. Oh, you know what? I forgot a component. I got one thing I have to do. This is weed eater line. So you use this once it's in. You start pulling from whichever end and it allows the rubber to go around the windshield. strap. God, I hope I don't break this thing, but it's holding the windshield up to where I can start working it, I think. I think, I hope. I think. <laughs> Did not work at all. Calm down, Sherman. Calm. Nothing's happening. Calm down. You're gonna fall. He wants to get on the hood. He keeps, he was jumping through the windshield hole onto the hood. What do you want, buddy? You don't need up here. I think we're getting close. I'm gonna have to push out the bottom of the windshield and push out the bottom gasket. And then I'm hoping then I could just kind of push it back into place. This should be close to just dropping in. This is where that weeder line comes in handy if that was a successful method. I think it would have been had this been a new windshield. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I'll come back with a razor blade or something. I'll cut all this out once it dries and uh, clean the window, clean all this stuff off of it. I want to look up all that information and remember it so maybe I could find windshields in the future. Here, there's one way to remember it, right? Sherman, are you serious? This is a windshield. Poor thing. He just banged the crap out of his head. Are you all right? All right. I'll, I'll help you out, buddy. 
Even though my hands are covered in silicone. Come here. Go. You big dummy. Here you go. I can't believe that. You about knocked yourself out. Yeah, I'd have to shake that off too if I were you. All right, well, you know, honestly, I don't really care that much if it leaks, it looks good, and it doesn't have a giant hole in it. It'll be easier to sell. Will you stop scratching? Come here. What is your deal? Good boy. Get you. Get you. You're so fast. You're so fast. I can't even move fast enough. Sherman hardly ever growls or barks. Sometimes he'll bark if you scare him. You need to cut those nails, buddy. Now what? All right, I think we're done. I got to get cleaned up and go to the boys' awards. Come here. Come on. <laughs> Come here. Uh, let's put my work rug up. Yeah, I'll pick this up later today, or, well, it's going to be storming, supposedly. So I'll pick this up in a couple days, I guess. And uh, we'll clean this all up, make it look good, then move on to the next stuff. All right, here we are a couple days later. It's starting to dry up a little bit. Windshield's looking good. I came here when it was raining and water is getting through from running down here, going under the windshield and kind of like seeping over. There were a few drops on that inner gas. You can see the water marks where water was sitting. So I might, I might come here with like a putty knife and peel this back and squirt some silicone and just work it around because it seems like my, my RTV silicone didn't really do much. But um, I'm not real concerned about it being watertight because look you know it just i just didn't want a big gaping hole in it so it looks much better and I'll, I'll clean all this up probably off camera let's uh see if we can figure out the fuel delivery issue and what i'm gonna do is replace the fuel pump let me see if what i got is the same thing okay what i got completely wrong but what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and take this fuel pump out and I'm going to look at the arm. If the arm is the same, I'm going to try to use this one. All right, so I got the uh, new fuel pump installed, lines tight, got it torqued, got the arm on top of the cam where it's supposed to be. Um, let's see if we can get this thing to start and run normal. And if it dies, we'll see if we have any fuel here. <laughs> a fuel leak here what is up with that needle stuck open now I don't know I guess we'll see if we can get that seat to stick closed That's the right pump. So for it to dump fuel like that, that the float's got to be stuck, or the needle. It moves so easy though. It's hard to believe. 
So now I have the opposite problem. I had no fuel, now I have too much fuel. This thing is flooded. I gotta clean the needle and seat out, I guess. I guess it would make sense that this would be clogged. It just doesn't make sense why it's moving freely, though. The needle's clean, everything's perfect. I don't get it. Get the wrong tool. Clean. It's perfectly clean. There's nothing at all wrong here. It's dirty now, but it wasn't. Strings in there. Float's not full. No fluid in it. What is happening? All right, tell me if it leaks. I put the old fuel pump back on and it's running fine. So I don't know if maybe taking that apart, cleaned out some sort of clog, or taking it off anyways. We got a little stumble. But it's running good, so this is where it gets me, where it's like, um, I trust it now, I'm gonna drive down the road, and then it breaks down down the road, you know? I don't know what to do doing it so it just started pumping fuel out there again i don't know what in the world it's like the float gets stuck and it floods i mean is this what's happening whenever i'm driving and it breaking it breaks down i don't recall this all being wet but maybe it's so hot that it evaporates before i could even get the hood open but um it ran for what five minutes before it decided to flood <laughs> guys i'm at a loss that float needle is perfectly clean so I don't know what to do here Carter YF what if there's some cheap Amazon alternatives and I really don't want to put Chinese crap on here but what are my other options I don't know what to do guys now, a lot of you guys understand what the heck's going on here but let me explain so this is our fuel supply through our filters into our pump the pump has an arm that actually that is actuated by the camshaft and that you know pressurizes and pumps fuel through this line fuel goes into here and then there's the float the floats right here going up and down and when it needs fuel the float drops because this is a fuel level right here so when when the carburetor when you use up fuel the float drops and as it drops on top of the float there's a needle going up and plugging a hole so the float drops the needle opens and this is pressurized right here and it starts filling up this bowl and then whenever the bowl's full again the float goes up again pushes that needle into the hole so, in a working carb, there should be, a, this is high pressure, I don't, I don't know how high, but it's pressurized with fuel. And then when the carburetor demands fuel, it opens and lets fuel in. Well, what's happening here is it's running perfect, and then all of a sudden it acts as if the, the float is down, it's demanding fuel, and then the level goes up and then it keeps going and going and going. Like, for some reason the needle isn't plugging the hole anymore. It's overfilling, going over the little walls inside the carburetor and just flooding the base, pouring out everywhere. So, I don't know why. Uh, I've rebuilt this carb. The needle looks perfect. All right, guys. So, I'm going to order a carburetor and uh, just, I, I hate to take a cop out, but I've rebuilt the carburetor and it's still acting funny. Um, so, let's just eliminate that completely because we know how we have fuel pressure. So, let's just... Order a carburetor. Sometimes you got to know when to just call it quits, make yourself a drink, relax, and uh, bite the bullet, spend some money, right? Okay, it's been a couple days, and uh, I got my carburetor in the mail. It's packaged well. This supposedly is to replace the Carter YF. It looks just like a car wire at the top does anyways. Except it has electric choke. That's fine.
All right, I got this somewhat installed. I have to drill a hole here to add my, my throttle linkage to it. My cable, I mean. There's this little, uh, this one I had to add to the other carburetor. So I'll, I'll just add it on there somewhere. But um, I got my filling hooked up. I'm not sure what goes there, if that's vacuum or, or what. This is an electric choke, which mine didn't have. It's also a port on this side. I'm not sure if I need to plug that. Kind of looks like it goes into the top of the bowl area, like maybe it's a vent, but I'm not sure. So I'm gonna see what happens, see if it'll start. And if it does start, I'll see what happens if I plug that. Hopefully fuel doesn't come out of anywhere. So here, y'all watch first start with the new carburetor. no fuel in the bowl at all. So I guess it was just primed and ready to go. Sure does run good, huh? Runs great. Runs amazing now. I hear what sounds like a water pump going out. setting a kind of stupid goal for myself. I'm gonna try to get the Jeep turned around in this really small spot, which is gonna be tight, but I'm gonna try to drive up this hill. And I know it didn't look like much, but um, my tundra could drive up this. If me and two-wheel drive is too heavy and just spin tires. I'm gonna do it in four-wheel drive, or two-wheel drive only, because I've never tried four-wheel drive. We might try it here if we can't get up. But, um, I'll this rock. We'll see if it can do it. We'll see if it, if it, We'll see if it can get up the hill without, you know, running out of fuel. You know, I'm putting a load on it, and that's when it ran, ran out of fuel before. I think we got it fixed. I think we got it fixed with the new carburetor. But um, we're just going to see if this... We're going to see if we can make it up the hill. And park it up there, and, you know, mission accomplished, right? Yeah, not nearly as sharp as I was hoping. This episode here uh, it's too cold outside to go for a drive risk breaking down and have to walk home I don't have anybody to haul me or tow me home and also I got a lot of family coming in this weekend so I think I'm gonna go ahead and end this episode right here this is the end of uh, episode 9 if you're interested in buying the gladiator reach out to me um, send a comment and I'll, I'll get in contact with you because I do want to go ahead and sell the gladiator sooner than later so I can bring more projects new content to the channel so i hope you enjoyed this episode i hope you're enjoying this series let me know if you want to see more of the gladiator please like comment subscribe it really helps out and as always thank you for watching texas hill Daily, and we'll see you next time <laughs> try harder <laughs> it's not cranky <laughs>